Okay, so in the previous video, I gave you why, uh, why it's why the comparison between these two events can be misleading. Uh, the pool size is quite different across gender, so uh, so uh, this comparison does not control for the pool size difference. So we are going to consider a different experiment or different uh, event. Think about this. What we have to compare is probability of promotion if the candidate was female or if the candidate was male. So this probability is different, different because the gender is now in uh, is included as a condition. It's conditioned on whether the candidate is female or male. So it's different. Previously, in this experiment, we just randomly choose any police officer and see if the chosen police officer was male or female. But now, what I'm assuming here is when I choose a random uh, police officer, I am going to choose only from a female pool or male pool. So I restrict the the population or the the, the set where I choose from uh, defined as like using their gender. So that's a key difference. So then, then from the same data, what we can calculate here is what you can think about here is like uh, you can like put it this way. There are in our observation there are 240 female candidates, and among them, 36 are promoted, and the other 204 were not promoted. So, like uh, the that that is among female candidates, 36 out of 240 are promoted. So that's the probability of promotion among female candidates, right? Similarly, if you add these two numbers, you can find there are 960 male candidates, right? And then among them, 288 were promoted and the other 672 were not. So as a result, 200, 288 over 960 is the probability of promotion. This is, these are the ratio of promotion, the probability of promotion within each gender, right? Within each group, right? Of course, again, it's a fake number. So, and I'll assume, I assume that there is no, nothing to consider other than this data. So everything else being equal, this is the probability, right? And then you can say something. It looks like 30% of male applicants are promoted, but only 15% of female applicants are promoted. So the probability uh, ratio, like, like I mean, the probability of promotion, the ratio of promotion shows quite huge difference uh, in the pro in across gender. So you can say something more by comparing these numbers, right? This is the idea of conditional probability. We consider two events, A and B, and then, uh, so when we define conditional probability, we need at least two events. One is the main event we are interested in, like in our example, A is promotion. We are interested in promotion probability, uh, probability of promotion, right? Probability of promotion is the main uh, like uh, interest. So promotion is the main event we are interested in. But there is a condition. We would like to put a condition when we calculate the probability of promotion, which is gender, whether female or male. So B in our example is male or female. So then we call this the conditional probability of A 
given B. Its interpretation is like this. To casually speaking, we are calculating the probability that an event A occurs given that B has already occurred. So we know that B happened or we only restrict our observations to the cases where B has already occurred, right? And then among them, what is the probability of uh, A, uh, another event? And we denote this as probability A bar B. So condition B comes late, uh, comes later after, comes after A, and then they are separated by bar. So bar uh, stands for given. So I'm going to call A as the event of interest and B as the conditioning event. I don't think it's a usual or like a universal terms, but I, I could not find any better terms. Like so, I'm going to call them this way. So anyhow, anyhow this is the conditional probability uh, notation. And uh, by the way, note that the order is important. I'm like it's a first, the main event first, and then condition later. A bar B is different from B bar A. If you change the order, then the meaning is totally different, as you can see here. Right? So then, how can you, I, I guess you got the idea what we are doing and how, what we are calculating, how we can calculate. So let me formulize, uh, formulate uh, what we can do to calculate the conditional probability. So the idea is simple. As I said, we are conditioning on a certain event. So we have to assume that this event, all the observations satisfy that condition. The condition must have uh, happened already. So that means when we calculate, say, probability of promotion among male, among men, so probability of promotion among men. So condition is man, but in our data, there are some observations that do not satisfy that condition. Those are female police officers. So female police officers do not satisfy the condition for the probability that we are going to calculate. So then what we can do here is simply ignore them, delete them. So those observations do not satisfy the condition we need. So we are going to delete uh, those observations for now and then calculate probability only based on these observations, right? It's intuitive because we put a condition, restrict your sample to the observations that satisfy that condition. And then, then like a total number of observations that satisfy the condition equals this number, some of those two numbers. Out of them, only 288 satisfy the main event, main event of interest, P, promotion. So 288 out of only male pol police officer, which results in 30%, right? Simple, straightforward, right? And then I'm going to uh, ask you to, like, you need to do it by yourself. Now calculate the conditional probability of promotion. Seems so far the same thing. The main event is the same, but I change it, the condition, given that a candidate is female. Try this question. Stop the video and do it uh, and resume when you're done. Okay, I believe you have done. So as I said, the condition is female. So that is only this, this column satisfies that condition. So male column, the first column should be erased. So we are going to delete the first column. We look at only these two numbers. And then among female observations, which is uh, the total number is uh, 36 plus 204. So there are 240 female observations 
that satisfy our condition. Among them, promotion happened only to 36 uh, candidates. So as a result, the probability, the conditional probability, equals 15 percent. So this is the conditional probability. Idea is simple. We put condition when we define a probability, and then, like when you calculate, when you look at data observations, just filter out uh, the observations so that all the remaining observations satisfy the condition. So, or that means delete all the observations that do not satisfy your condition. Then, automatically, the resulting probability will be a conditional probability, right? Straightforward. Uh, by the way, as I said, the order is important. P is the main event, F is the condition. So I, I wrote it as P bar F. But if you calculate F bar P, the result will be different. Let's see, just to see what happens. I'll show you. So if you mistake the probability and calculate F bar P, then condition is now P. Previously, the condition was F, so we deleted male. But now, the condition is promotion. So, we are going to delete those who are not promoted. So, we only have these two numbers. Then, simple, out of, out of the, those promoted uh, candidates, how much, how many are female? 36. So, 36 numerator is the same because the numerator is defined by the main event but the denominator is different now denominator because denominator is defined by the condition so there are this many uh, observations that satisfy the condition and out of them 36 uh, is female so as a result 11 percent is the resulting probability as you can see they are different so you should be careful uh, now so you see how the process then what we can formulate out of what you can extract out of that process is this formula probability of a given b can be written as so denominate first denominator remember the denominator is the number of observations that satisfy the condition. So that is frequency of B condition, right? And numerator, among those who satisfy B, we are looking at how many are, how many satisfy A at the same time. So as a result, the numerator, what's counted in the numerator, should satisfy two events at the same time, A and B, because already only the all the remaining observations satisfy B, and then on top of that, we require A to be satisfied. So we count like this. So for example, female and then female and promoted, for example, in our example. So this is uh, the formula we can extract from that process. You, may, you don't need to memorize this one on, as long as you understand uh, how you can calculate the conditional probability. So I, but I just giving you, I'm giving you just formula just in case if you want one and uh, because they are in the textbook. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, another video, uh, another example uh, considering the conditional probability. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye.